Let's talk now to Dr. Peter Chin Hong. He's a professor of medicine and an infectious disease specialist at the University of California, San Francisco. Can you talk to us about tracing the origins from a historical context? Because I think that's kind of interesting. When you look at HIV, it starts to surface here in the 1980s in the United States, and people are looking at it. This is a mysterious disease. But it wasn't until 1999 that Alabama researchers cracked the mysterious origins of HIV, and that uh, traced back to the early 1900s uh, was the first cases. So it takes a long time to kind of trace these origins. Can you actually turn something this quickly? No, you definitely can't, Mike. Uh, it's really premature. If you're thinking of a scientific perspective, even if you have the genomic sequencing, it takes years to really try to trace back the lineage. It is useful, though, scientifically to try and figure out origin of viruses because you look at the rate of evolution, you anticipate where it might be going and how to prevent future uh, infections that may be arising from places that man or woman haven't, hasn't gone before. I've talked to some infectious disease experts who, uh, who dismiss uh, this lab leak theory, uh, one even calling it a lab leak allegation. Can you talk to us about the politicization of this, of this origins of COVID? Yeah, um, whenever you infiltrate politics with science, it's not a great thing. At the end of the day, uh, the virus is here, it's circulating. There are lots of role models of virus uh, jumping from animals to humans, so this won't be the first time. I think it's dangerous to really uh, put the lens of politics on because it distracts from the work of the day, so to speak. However, I do hope that um, people uh, collaborate, they're transparent, and, you know, it's led by science, not politics. Uh, and really, it's a scientific question, not one of politics. Peter, let's talk about what we're seeing right now. Can you give us an update on China's global vaccine efforts? Yeah, so China was first out of the gate, so to speak, to distribute virus vaccines to the rest of the world. Um, and, you know, it, it has a really robust vaccination program. Uh, probably on par with the U EU for vaccination, you know, about 55% of the population fully vaccinated, um, you know, above uh, many other countries. It's really uh, proceeded at a rapid pace. Uh, in terms of the virus in China, uh, recently, there, in the last few days, have been no uh, de novo uh, intra-country transmissions. All of the, the transmissions have been imported cases. So I think... Uh, for now, the zero virus policy seems to be working, but with Delta and other very transmissible variants, it's really tough to keep that up vis-a-vis uh, -vis Australia, New Zealand, Singapore that have tried to really seal off their borders. Yeah, it, I was just going to ask you about that. I mean, we've, we're seeing the Delta variant. Uh, we're seeing places like Israel, uh, Iceland, uh, New Zealand, where they've been very successful. Uh, you mentioned Singapore. And yet now we're seeing uh, cases again. Uh, there's also this talk about the Lambda variant. So give us the landscape out there. What are your concerns as we continue to see these cases? Um, my real feeling about this, Mike, is that one needs to disentangle uh, infection from the outcome we really care about, which is hospitalizations, intensive care unit admissions, ventilator use, and death. If we focus on infections, we're going to be reaching for an unreachable goal. As new variants come up, like Delta, they're going to be very transmissible. And personally, I could get infected a million times if I don't go to the hospital, if I don't go to the ICU, if I don't die, I'd be really happy. And at the end of the day, that's the outcome of the vaccine we care most about. Thank you so much for putting in perspective, because I think you make a really good point there, because we get colds all the time, we get the flu all the time, uh, and, and that's a really good point. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Mike.